Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar with Mako Gold. I'm Danica Warburton, and I'm the Principal of Investability, and I'm joined today by Mako's MD, Peter Ledridge, and we're very excited to be uh, walking you through the recently announced mineral resource estimate at the Napoli project. So today's format is going to be that Peter will um, do a short presentation, and then we're going to open it up to a Q&A. So without further ado, I will hand over to you, Peter. Uh, hi, everybody. Thanks for attending. Um, so I'll, I'll bring up my uh, presentation and uh, it should be working now. Is that, is that all good now? That's perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Um, yes, so we're pretty excited that we've been working for a little while now on, on bringing out our maiden resource. It's only been a couple of years, but uh, so we came out with 868,000 ounces uh, at 1.2 gram per ton. And this is just the beginning of what we're doing. Uh, so our, our resource represents only about 13% of the prospective ground. Uh, that's, that's all the things that I'll be talking about in more detail and then the rapid pathway to growth of the resource. And uh, you'll see at the end that we do, do have a pretty good team that we've done it before. We've made discoveries in West Africa. And uh, so, you know, we're not new to this. And we're in a really good jurisdiction that, that hosts over uh, 400 million ounces of gold that's been discovered in an area of the size of Western Australia. So here's really the highlight of, of, of the show, I guess. It's not me, it's the ounces. Uh, so on our global resources, only on two of our pro prospects, it's a Chag and Gogbala prospects that you can see at the bottom of this map and together, as I said, it's 868,000 ounces at 1.2 grams per ton. And so you can see there's four prospects on there. We've got that 30 kilometer shear that runs along the entire permit. And so you can see, see why we're pretty excited to have come up with just under 900,000 ounces when we've only actually done about 13% uh, of the drilling uh, to be done there. Uh, so we're currently drilling on the Congo Ho prospect and we will be drilling on Chaganor. So those are other targets down the road. So this is a, a kind of different view of it that, that really explains it quite well. Uh, you can see the cutaway of about uh, it's roughly seven kilometers out of the 30 kilometers of shear that you see in, in red in the inset. And at Gogbala, we've got, uh, you know, 323,000 ounces, and that's only on 2.4 kilometers. Then on, on Chaga, we've got two kilometers with 545,000 ounces. And you can see the area between them. There's that four and a half kilometer area where we did get some good drill results, but obviously need to do more drilling. Another thing that's really important that you see on there is how shallow the resource is. Uh, on the uh, Gog Bala, we're at about 150 meters uh, um, maximum, and, and then on Chag, 195 meters. So uh, the average West African deposit is about 300 meters. So you can see we've got quite a, quite a bit of optionality here. You can see that the, the uh, areas uh, where that weren't included in the resource. Uh, so this is Chaga, and, and one of the things that's very exciting about that is you can see those pink and red areas, and those uh, go right up the surface and go all the way down to 200 meters beyond our resource uh, limit. And so what that tells us is, you know, drilling around these, er these areas as well is where we're going to add some ounces, you know, quite quickly in our opinion. So this is that cross section of what you saw. You can see that red line, that's a resource at that, that, that location of about 175 meters. You can see the nice high grade that's not included in that. And the main reason that wasn't included is we haven't done enough drilling. And I'm not being critical of our team because we've done a lot of drilling, but, but basically we got to do some drilling on sections before, behind and, and ahead of that, put another drill hole underneath that, that that further drill hole, and then that stuff should be included in the uh, in the resource uh, updated resource down the road. So on Chaga, we've done uh, preliminary metallurgical testing, and both oxide and fresh rock came back over ninety four percent. So that's simple bottle rolls. We'll be doing some more uh, kinetic te kinetic testing and and, and other uh, metallurgical testing both on Chaga and, and Gogbala, but it's very encouraging to know that we've got recoveries at Chaga so far over 94%, both in the oxide and the fresh rock. 
Um, so now you're looking at Gongbala, which is about uh, four and a half kilometers south of, of Chaga. You can see it's a, a two two pods of uh, uh, drilling uh, a resource sort of, we like to call it <laughs> New Zealand. It's the North Island here and the South Island here. And so the obvious growth patterns here is in between, between the North Island, South Island, where my cursor is, we're gonna drill here and hopefully connect the two. And then you can see these faults that are shown in kind of beigey brown, orange sort of thing. And what's really exciting is all the areas that, that I'll show you on the next slide, but pay attention to this here over here. This is only 20,000 ounces of the resource and, and which really shows how much growth we do have. So you can see that whole area now, Chag, uh, sorry, Gog Valley, there's the North Island and the South Island as I was referring to. So we're gonna fill in this old gap in between here. And this is that little part of that resource that I was talking about. That's about 20,000 ounces. It's only about five or six holes, but that was the last place we drilled really before shutting off the drilling for, uh, uh, for resource. So what we're really excited about is we got some really nice results out of there. One sample, you know, six meters at five grams. And we've got that fault that comes all the way down here where my cursor is in that pink ellipse, ellipse. And that's about four and a half kilometers. So when you consider our resources over 2.4 kilometers in that area, we've got another four and a half kilometers there. And then we've got two kilometers north here as well, where we've done some drilling and got some good results. So it's a question of working outwards from that. You go to known results, you work outwards, and then you add ounces. So that's, that's our strategy for growing the ounces in, uh, in the shallow way. And then there's also drilling deeper. Uh, I mentioned before, you can see here again, you know, the average depth here is a, a boat at that place, it's 150 meters, the deepest is 160. Uh, I, I said 150 before, but it's 160 at, at Dog Bala. You can see this area that was included in the resource. And so what's really interesting, as I mentioned before, the average West African uh, resource is about uh, 300 meters. We're looking at 160 meters here and 195 meters maximum at Chagas. So we've got a lot of growth uh, that we can uh, get at that quickly as well. So now we're talking about the regional growth. So remember on the first slide, I showed you there's like four prospects and we're drilling at one of them now, this is it. This is a Combo prospect where through a, a recent geological mapping, we found a nine kilometer long artisanal mining site. You can see a photo of it where there's this guy working at the bottom there. Uh, and basically that, that really is a beautiful target where we pulled our rig off uh, the other project we're drilling on to go and drill this immediately. So the object here is say at Chag and Gogbala, we come up, you know, in the short term, you know, with a million and a half ounces uh, in the not too distant future. And then you look at something like this and then we make a discovery here. Well, well then that's where your next resource drilling comes out. So over the entire permit, we're targeting, you know, two, three million ounces. And we don't think that we're, you know, too unreal unrealistic. You can see the other prospect here, Chaga North, which uh, we uh, we recently did some air core drilling and got four meters, 101 grams per ton. Uh, we've got some very good rock chip samplings from uh, you know, what we did and, and some historical ones. And you can see there again, there's part of that 30 kilometer shear that that dotted black line. And you can see where uh, the 545,000 ounces at Chagas sits. And so we're just moving north along that shear. And the yellow you see is that 40 PPB Serlin on me, which I forgot to mention. You can go back to our presentation and see on our, the, the permit slide. It's a 23 kilometer soil auger on me that goes the entire way. And then there's another one at, at Kobaho as well. So what we're looking at here is a two kilometer high priority drill target. So after the wet season, we'll be drilling some, uh, doing some drilling there. So I'd just like to compare ourselves to some of our peers. And, and the closest one that I can see is, is uh, Tiedo, who about three years ago was sitting at the same share price as we are. And they had about 700,000 ounces in the ground. And you can see their growth trajectory right now, they're sitting about 35 cents. So, you know, the markets are pretty uh, repressed right now. So they were sitting in the 40s and 50s until quite recently. So we see a similar uh, growth path for Mako. 
And incidentally, they're in exactly the same greenstone belt as we are. And it's the only greenstone belt in uh, West Africa that doesn't have an operating mine yet. So you can see where their project is here and ours is, is up here. And now I'll show you very briefly, I'll talk about our other two projects, that go, uh, the other two permits that constitute the Kohogo project. And um, so basically what we're doing here, there's Barrick's 5 million ounce mine. We're 30 and 15 kilometers away from it. That's not why we applied for the ground. We applied for the ground because of this nice greenstone granite contact. And we did some auger drilling, some soil sampling, some uh, airborne geophysics. And, and so we started a little drill program actually down here. And then we aborted it so that we could go to the other uh, Kobo Hook prospect and drill that quickly, but we'll go back to that. And that was based on auger anomalies. And then we've got some other real good auger anomalies here. So, uh, you know, very exciting projects in their own right. It's in a very fertile greenstone belt. And it's, our anomalies are about the same size as that 5 million ounce Tongan mine. And then as far as the local community, we help out a lot. We drill the water well, we fix our roads when we're doing our uh, our uh, drilling uh, drill pads, and we train them up a lot. Uh, you can see uh, people doing various jobs. They're all the people that we've trained. And this is part of our team when Anne, myself, and uh, Kate, our database geologists, were over there in uh, uh, April. And we don't have one expat on the ground, which keeps our, uh, our um, the, the country administration very happy. It, it's, it really supports the local community. So we've got a very good relationship with all parts of the government over there. And you can see they're pretty happy workers and that's only a few of them because they're on roster days off. And then the rest of our team is uh, obviously our board and management. And so everybody except the uh, company secretary has very strong West African experience. We have uh, our um, Director Steve Zaninovich, who uh, was with Griffin Mining and then men, and went on to Taranga to do their resource, which is just north of our projects, uh, our Kohogo project. And we got Mikhail Musillo, our, our uh, chairman, who was on the board of Orbis and, uh, and also on the board of Cardinal to help with those uh, takeovers. You can see Anne and I, we're a husband wife team, been working for about 30 years. Uh, both uh, geologists with uh, lots of ground experience, and then our two key guys that have been with us, Ibrahim and Bukhari, they've been with us about 10 years when we were with Orbis. So I'll skip over that part uh, just to say that, uh, you know, we got a market cap of about 30 million, but uh, keep, you know, we've got some 36% institutional shareholders, and we still have lots of cash in the bank. And this is uh, our peer comparison. You can see where we are, you know, why we here and everybody else is higher. Well, we think that we have, uh, uh, we're very undervalued. And, uh, uh, you know, if you want to ask more questions, I explain why. And this is the area you can see we're working in, where I said it's the same size as uh, Western Australia, 1500 meters wide and 70 gold mines over, uh, gold deposits over 1 million ounces and 40 of those were over 3 million ounces. So we're definitely an elephant country there. And very good infrastructure. You can see Abbey John's like a very modern city. It, it uh, provides its uh, hydroelectric power. So that'll give us, assuming we go into production, that'll give us a green footprint because we'll be uh, firing up with the electro, uh, hydroelectricity. And uh, yep, so that's uh, that sums up Nako in in a very short uh, time frame. And uh, happy to answer all your questions. I'll stop sharing my uh, my presentation now. Thanks so much, Peter. That was great and whizzing through it very uh, quickly. So uh, we will open it up now to questions. We've had lots of great questions sent through um, on email and on the Q&A feature, which is just down the bottom of your screen if you wanted to type in a question for Peter. So um, I guess firstly, uh, one that came through um, with regard to the instos on your register, you've got some big um, funds uh, on, on the register. Have they provided any feedback on um, the mineral resource estimate. They have, and I just came back from Toronto uh, yesterday, so I'm a little bit jet lag. Uh, <laughs> I was at PDAC, uh, the world's uh, biggest mining conference. And obviously I met with some of our North American investors over there and they were actually, uh, um, 
our, our resource exceeded their expectations. Uh, most of the analysts had us, you know, coming in at, you know, five, 600, maybe 700,000 ounces. And, uh, you know, we came in just a little bit shy of 900,000 ounces. So, uh, yeah, they're very, they're very pleased with that. And I think we've got their, uh, their ongoing support. Harry's asked, um, we said, congratulations on a successful um, mineral resource estimate. What is your strategy for expanding um, the resource further? You touched on that this is just the, just the beginning. Yeah, so we, we see this as, you know, literally the first step, uh, because as I mentioned, we are going for two, three, four million ounce resource on the permit. And so, uh, you know, having just under 900,000 ounces uh, uh, that we've done in about two years, we think we can grow it uh, quickly uh, in less than two years, because now we know where to drill. I mean, when, when you do make a discovery, you know, there's a steep learning curve, you know, <laughs> we, we changed our drilling direction a couple of years ago or a year and a half ago and, uh, you know, that kind of thing. So we, we think that we can grow the resource in a very cost efficient manner uh, by getting those shallow ounces. I talked about the four and a half kilometers on one fold and two and a half kilometers going north of Gogbala. So, you know, that's uh, basically six and a half kilometers where we can you know, add potential ounces by drilling 100, 150 meter holes. And then there's the other deeper areas where you know, I mentioned resource depth, which is very shallow. And if we do a few deeper holes, I'm not talking four or 500 meters, I'm talking like two, 300 meters, uh, and then you know, put them beside some other holes that we didn't have enough holes to include the resource, we can add some quick ounces there. Tony sent a question through. Uh, what uh, at what resource size do you push the button on a scoping study? Okay, I like to use a good Australian expression, how long is a piece <laughs> of string? You know, there's very quite, quite a few metrics that come into it. Obviously, it's your stripping ratio. Uh, we think we have a pretty good one because we've got some low grade with some high grade. And so you, you imagine a pit, not too much goes into a uh, to the waste stockpile. Um, but having said that, we, we understand that just under 900,000 ounces does not constitute something you can start a mine with uh, as a rule. Uh, so you know, we think that once we get to a million and a half, two million ounces, then we can be uh, launching into full on feasibility and, uh, and then really progressing to the mining stage. There's a few questions on the grade uh, or increasing the grade. Yeah. Uh, James and uh, Jason both um, have asked, Similar questions. Um, awesome results on the recent MRE. My question is about grade. Currently, uh, 1.2 grams per ton. Um, seems to be a bit uh, lower, on the lower end of what you've been drilling over the past 18 months. Um, so what's your future expectations on increasing the grade as you continue to drill either at depth or across the um, larger zone? Yep, that's a very good question. And I'm not surprised that a few people are disappointed with the grade, but uh, because companies always announce their best throw holes. So have, having said that, we do have that low, low, uh, low grade wide envelope, which, you know, makes a mining scenario, you know, pretty, uh, pretty seamless. But we, we really think that we can raise the grade as we go forward, because what we've seen both on, on Chag and Godbala is as we drill deeper, uh, the, the grade gets better. So I've got the figures here for anybody that's interested. So at mm -hmm. Chag at the depth of zero to 50, we have uh, 1.09 grams per ton. When we go uh, below uh, 150, then we get 1.38 grams per ton. Uh, for the same thing at Gogbala, at uh, zero to 50, we've got 1.19 gram per ton. And then when we go below 150, uh, meters vertical depth, then we have 1.9 grams per ton. So uh, obviously I'm talking about drilling a little bit deeper in, in some areas, so that'll get the grade up. And then there's always these nice little pockets that you pick up uh, when, you're, uh, when you're drilling. Basically the intersection of the north-south fault with the east-west fault, uh, more or less. And then at those intersections you have, I'm not gonna get too technical, but dilational zones that basically opens a plumbing work for the for the fluids to come in that are carrying gold. And at those intersections, you get some real nice high grade pods, which you've seen on, on Chaga and Dog Ballad, the ones that show up on, on the plan view, you know, red and pink. So we think we can get the grade up uh, doing that as well as we grow the resource. And um, on the 
forward gold production, uh, the target resource side. Stephen's asked, in terms of forward uh, gold production, what ballpark resource target is desired before any mining activity can commence? Yeah, so I kind of answered that question mm -hmm. a little bit where, you know, we think that once we get to, you know, 1.5 to 2 million ounces, uh, you can usually, you know, uh, start a mine off that. As I said, every scenario is, is different. And then, of course, we'll have to do scoping study and feasibility. But, you know, we see not that not being too long away where, you know, we uh, we get to feasibility within a couple of years or something, uh, under two years, I hope. And I don't want to put any hard timelines on it, but we do move fast. Um, there's been a few questions come through on um, the valuation. So, uh, I'll read Tony's. Uh, your EV is now only 31 uh, Australian dollars per resource ounce based on Oclo's takeover in Mali, uh, which was 135 ounces. Um, would you agree that Mako is hideously, hideously undervalued? I, I would totally agree. And the, the unfortunate part about that is you'll you'll get every managing answering any any managing director answering yes to that True. question. <laughs> some of them are telling us the truth and some aren't. But all you got to do is go look at the other ones. And as uh, Tony said, yeah, you look at the takeover price of, uh, of Oclo and then the others, you know, we've done our own internal studies and, and you know, the average uh, price is about 80, 70 to $80. Uh, um, and here we are sitting at about 30, $35. So I think those numbers, you know, kind of tell you that we're, you know, at least half, if not three times undervalued. And um, there's been a question on, um, uh, is there any reason you haven't been buying shares in the company over the last 12 months on market at these apparently uh, very low and undervalued prices? Yep, and there is. And the main reason is uh, you don't want to look my bank balance. So, uh, but that's not the, that's not the main reason, but uh, basically, uh, I've, you know, we've been drilling nonstop for the last 12 months. And so there's always information coming in. So I'm always privy to information coming in. And then, uh, you know, people would start squawking if I bought shares and then I announce a nice uh, drill intercept. And, and the other reason really is uh, I've already got, uh, between uh, Anne and myself, we've got 8 million shares. Uh, so we own about just uh, under 2% of the company. So, all the shareholders should be totally convinced that uh, mm -hmm. my interests are in line with them because, uh, you know, that's going to be my new sailboat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, be able to retire soon, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, Ches has asked a question on, um, can you please give an estimate of, the, of your discovery cost per ounce going forward? How many ounces would justify a standalone plant? Yeah, so the standalone plant's been asked before, but basically I'll go again to, you know, 1.5, 2 million ounces. That's when we'd start yeah. thinking about it. And our discovery costs have been in the order of $17 an ounce. And uh, the, the average for West Africa, it, it depends, you know, which one it is. But, but in West Africa, it's somewhere between 20 to 30 an ounce. And and in the rest of the world, it's a little bit higher. So we're, we're well within, you know, um, the uh, the ballpark where we should be. And then we think that our, our cost will go down uh, going forward because we kind of know where to drill now. We get those faults that we're just aching to start drilling again on. So um, I think people will find that we'll find more ounces for, for less money. And Matt asked, um... Uh, has there been any interest from the bigger players to know more about the quality of Mako's tenement holding post the... Um, well, MR? yeah, yeah, we've had meetings at some of these conferences, you know, with some of the big companies and, and they, they see what we're doing. And, and up to now, obviously, we haven't had a, a resource out. Uh, and it was just, you know, me telling the world that we're going to have a, you know, a decent resource. Now I've kind of uh, validated that and, and shown the world that yes, we've got just under 900,000 ounces. And, and I think we've shown a clear pathway of how we're going to grow that quickly. So uh, I expect the interest from international, you know, the bigger companies to, to start increasing. But 
you know, if we do go down, uh, you know, there's two ways to go down. You can get taken over like Outlaw did or some other companies, or you can put it into production yourself. But I would like to think that if we are considering a takeover that we have like a million and a half, two million ounces on the ground before we even start thinking about that. And so that, you know, your share price is, uh, you know, quite a bit higher when you're when you're doing that. Sort of tying into that, I guess, with all the the, plan, the drilling that you have planned to expand the resource further, um, how you know is there going to be a capital raise needed or coming soon? Well, I don't. I really don't want people to uh, think that we're in a hurry to do a capital raise because we finished uh, the March quarter with just under six million dollars in the bank and then finished off our drilling. And, you know, if they're waiting for a capital raise to go out and buy shares on market, I'd like to remind them that with the markets being in turmoil right now, we're actually at our 52 week low. So if they're waiting for, for a fire sale, I certainly hope it's not going to happen. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, they can keep speculating about capital raise, but we'll do one when we think we need to do one. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, they'll just see a trading halt when it happens, if it happens. Okay, so I've got one more question um, on the upcoming news flow and catalyst. Um, what is the, can you just give a bit of a summary, I guess, of the planned um, work uh, program for the next six to 12 months? Yeah, so obviously just a lot of drilling to add ounces and, you know, it's a, it's a simple answer, you know, for uh, you put the money into the ground and, and then you get ounces out of it. And uh, so that's what it's going to be. And uh, Right now we're going into the wet season. Uh, so we're probably not going to be, you know, we'll, we'll try to push a little bit, uh, but we usually have to shut down for about six weeks of that. So, uh, but yeah, we'll be drilling and, and the first place we'll be drilling will be at Gogbala, obviously, because that's where we can add ounces quickly. Are there any parting comments you'd like to leave investors with? Well, um, I think I've presented a pretty good case for a severely undervalued company. Uh, it, and, uh, you know, we've, we've actually delivered on all our promises. Uh, you know, we, we talked about our, you know, quick turnaround for, for assays. So, we, you know, we put out quite a few ASX releases. There's still some more ASX releases to come out, you know, from our drilling at uh, our, the Comboho prospect. Uh, and... Uh, so, you know, in light of the fact that we've delivered on what we said we were going to deliver, and, and I think we over-delivered on our maiden resource, uh, just stay tuned to this space. And, uh, and uh, I'm always available for, for questions. If you want to email me or, or call me, uh, my, uh, my contact details are on all our presentations and all our ASX releases. Brilliant. Yeah, it seems, uh, you know, so much pretend, you know, potential as well. It's just the tip of the iceberg, I think, this, this uh, initial maiden resource estimate. So thank you for your time today, Peter. A uh, replay of the webinar will be available on the company's website, hopefully tomorrow. Um, we'll email it to you as well. And yes, great to uh, have you join us today. So thank you. My pleasure. <laughs>